Hi, welcome to the first ever Beat 'em Ups Direct. Today, I have over 100 games coming to Nintendo Switch to share with all of you. Because I kind of feel like that Nintendo Direct we just had sucked. And not because it didn't have great games announced, it really did. I mean, Metroid, Zelda, can't go wrong. But because there are hundreds of games on the way to Switch, loads of them coming in the next couple of months, most of them arriving before the end of the year, and that Direct didn't show us any of them. So I'm going to. I usually talk more, I usually try and say stuff, there's no time, I don't want this to be an hour-long video. 115 games coming to the Switch, I'm gonna break the releases down into months, starting with June right now and working all the way through to the end of the year. Then after that, I'm going to go through the games that are scheduled for 2021, but don't have launch dates yet. Then after that, I'm going to do 2022. And then finally, the who knows, you know the games I'm talking about. So yes, not only are you about to see over 100 games coming to your favorite console, but I'm going to give you their exact release dates from now. Okay. June. The HD remaster of The Legend of Mana comes to the Switch on the 24th, where you set off on a journey to discover special artifacts, placing them wherever you like on the map to bring towns and dungeons to life. Not only has the music been rearranged for this remaster, but there's new features including turning off enemy encounters and a never-before-released minigame. Tony Hawk 1 and 2 have been rebuilt from the ground up and they look better than ever. All skaters, levels, and tricks are back and fully remastered. I played this last year on Xbox and it feels exactly how I remembered it. I can't wait to skate on the go. Speaking of old school games getting remasters, Destroy All Humans terrorizes the Switch on the 29th. It was a cult classic back in the original Xbox and PlayStation days, but now you can annihilate puny humans on the toilet using an assortment of alien weaponry and the psychic abilities. One giant step on mankind. See what I did? We don't have time for jokes. Cotton Reboot. Japan's favorite shooter mascot finds her way into beautiful HD on Switch. This is the original cute em up even before me. We don't have time for jokes. It will test your skills as well as tug on your heartstrings. Mario Golf Super Rush. Time to hit the green with up to four players locally or online. Yes, thank you Nintendo for actually supporting online play with friends. If you ever played the chaos that was Mario Tennis, you'll know that Nintendo can take sport games and manage to make them a ton of fun. With crazy over the top modes, abilities and obstacles, there's even an adventure mode that promises to be full of surprises. <laughs> I'm Eugene, the computer hacker, and I'm here to hack your system. Thankfully, there's no Express VPN around here to stop me and my dastardly ways. Wait, hold on. <laughs> ah! France? Oh man, they must have turned on their Express VPN and changed their location. Which of course then routed their connection through one of Express VPN's 3000 plus servers, hiding their real IP address and sending me. Yeah. I was just about to steal their credit card information baguette. too. Get your baguette. And I hate baguettes. ExpressVPN will protect you at home, work, and anywhere online. But there's a fun side to it too, like with Netflix, these services all have more content, but it's all region locked. And I'm still having to pay full price? That's like going to Disneyland and paying $80 to get in, but they only let you ride the teacups. Screw that noise, take your ExpressVPN, plop yourself in Australia and boom bam, you got South Park, Rick and Morty, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You can try it with all different kinds of places, just See what pops up by going to expressvpn.com forward slash beat-em-ups and find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN free. Not as big as I thought it would be. Ender Lilies is a dark fantasy 2D action RPG filled with hauntingly beautiful locations over an expansive map with complete freedom in which path to take and which bosses to confront. Sounds a little Breath of the Wildy. It already has 10 out of 10 on Steam, so get ready. Lego Builder's Journey. This Lego game is a little different to all the other Lego versions of summer blockbuster movies. Rather, it's a puzzle game played out on little dioramas. Think Toad Treasure Tracker, but 
Lego. You play Journey. You should have played Flower. But now comes a new groundbreaking social adventure that is set to warm your hearts. It's called Sky Children of Light. I reviewed this game about a year ago since it's been out on mobile for a while and I loved it. You soar around a beautiful world exploring realms, solving puzzles and interacting with other players. Worms Rumble is worms like you've never played it before with intense real-time arena-based 32 player cross-platform combat. It's actually a pretty cool idea for the franchise with deathmatch and last worm standing modes it's kind of like a battle royale with worms and i'm here for it the legendary alex kid returns with alex kid in miracle world dx experience this game like never before complete with new hd graphics gameplay improvements and animations it's the original game but with brand new levels that expand the story behind alex kid summer pause look i have no idea if this game will actually be good but i saw it while i was making this video. It has 18 handcrafted summer islands with over a hundred sleeping cats for you to wake up and find. You also collect seashells and solve puzzles. How can it be bad? Disgaea 6. Strategy role-playing games are about to get a serious punch in the throat when the first new Disgaea game in six years releases on Switch. With 3D visuals for the first time, the Disgaea series is known for complex gameplay, extremely high maximum stats, and humorous dialogue. The SNES cult classic Zombies Ate My Neighbors and its sequel I didn't even know it had until making this video, Ghoul Patrol, come to Switch on the 29th with all new features like saving and a two-player local co-op mode. And all of that is just this month. And there is more I missed earlier in the month, like Game Builder Garage, Ninja Gaiden Collection, and Strange Brigade. The Switch is on fire right now, and I feel like people don't know it. Maybe because the Nintendo Direct didn't tell us. Okay, <laughs> July. The world ends with you finally receives a sequel. The original game followed Neku and his fight to survive a life or death game in a twisted tale set in Tokyo. There's no telling how this new tale will unfold, but it looks like a new hero by the name of Rindo is being forced to complete in a similar so-called Reaper game. Chris Tales is a game that I've been talking about for way too long. With more delays than Cyberpunk 2077, Chris Tales has been in multiple of my upcoming Switch game videos, but I can finally, happily say that it releases July 20th. I'm excited for this one. It's a love letter to classic JRPGs and inspired by games like Persona 5, Final Fantasy, and Chrono Trigger. With a gorgeous hand-drawn 2D art style, you experience the past, present, and future simultaneously. Pokemon Unite. Take League of Legends or Dota, but it's Pokemon now. I don't know who wanted this, but we're getting it and it's free to play in July. Last Stop. An adventure set in present day London where you play as three separate characters whose worlds collide in midst of a supernatural crisis. It's a third person adventure with full voice acting and an original soundtrack from an award winning composer. Yeez 9. Many of you know I loved Yeez 8. It was one of my early favorite games to play on Switch. Well, Yeez 9 is finally getting close. A new installment in the action role-playing series, it further builds on the gameplay foundation of 8, where you control multiple main characters that can be switched between on the fly, each with their own playstyles and unique skills. Ace Attorney. If there's one series of games I know little to nothing about, it's Ace Attorney. Hopefully now is a great time to start playing because The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles is releasing July 27th. Examine evidence and clues and attempt to deduce the dastardly intent behind the crimes before heading to the court Room. Just don't forget to yell OBJECTION for whatever reason I guess I'll discover next month. <laughs> Zelda Skyward Sword HD. One game on this list that needs no introduction or explanation whatsoever, but I'ma do it anyway. Take to the skies and waggle your sword in the air like you just don't care in the earliest story in the Legend of Zelda series. Chronologically, this is the first story in the Zelda universe, making this the first incarnation of Link. Unlike seemingly most Zelda fans, I actually I actually really like this Zelda title, while many consider it the weakest in the franchise, but it's still Zelda. I'll be streaming this entire game on Twitch whenever it releases because I couldn't be more hyped. Follow me at twitch.tv forward slash beat'em-ups if you want to watch that. Monster Hunter Stories 2. It's another highly anticipated release for me. A beautiful looking game set in the world of Monster Hunter, but completely different from the traditional style of game you might expect. It has a more bright cartoonish art style, similar gameplay
gameplay, but more story focused, with the battles being turn based. Not all monsters are bad monsters either. You can form bonds with friendly monsters known as monsties that will fight alongside you, and you can even get little monsty eggs and hatch them. I prefer these games over the traditional style ones, and I'm just really excited. Samurai Warriors 5. The latest entry in the Samurai Warriors franchise has been reimagined from the story, characters, and visuals. Choose from a number of new and returning characters while utilizing new abilities to take on the enemy. Hoa! I discovered Hoa for the first time while researching for this video. There is also a lot of mystery around this game's release, but apparently it's a breathtaking puzzle platformer game that features hand-painted art, lovely music, and a peaceful, relaxing atmosphere. I mean, look at these little cuties. Monster Harvest. Okay, you Stardew and Pokemon fans, and also fans of anything adorable. Monster Harvest is a farming adventure with a twist. Develop your own farm, build and customize your house, craft furniture, make jams, and mutate your own crops to create loyal and fierce companions you can take into turn-based battles. That was a turn. It's literally Stardew meets Pokemon, and yeah, I want it really bad. That's July. August. I've had my eye on Zenjon for a while, but weirdly, it still isn't listed on Nintendo's website. Despite GameStop saying the physical launches on August 6th, it's an anime action RPG and roguelite with a selection of unique characters and varying playstyles. It has a heavy persona mixed with Diablo vibes. No More Heroes 3. The legendary assassin Travis Touchstone makes a glorious return in No More Heroes 3 exclusively on Nintendo Switch. These games are a mix of hack and slash and beat em up, which they call slash em up. And I love that. They are also super quirky and weird, which you can kind of expect from the mind of the developer Suda. Returning to an open world format, you and your beam katana will start slaying in August. The Falconeer. Soar through the skies aboard a majestic warbird. Explore a stunning oceanic world and engage in epic aerial dogfights. Sure, the enemies have battleships and giant fortresses, but you got a burb. If you're waiting for Star Fox, this one might tie you over. Foreclosed is an interesting one. One I managed to dig up. It's a narrative driven action adventure set in a cyberpunk. Set in a cyberpunk. Sorry, that happens every time. World filled with action, suspense, and experimental augmentations. Okay, so the description sounds eerily familiar, but the gameplay trailer looks sick. In Sound Mind. From the creators of cult classic Nightmare House 2 comes an imaginative psychological survival horror experience that challenges your expectations with mind bending puzzles and daunting boss fights. How your wallet's feeling? A little on fire? Here comes September. <laughs> Diablo 2 Resurrected, a timeless classic remastered. I mean, what do I even need to say other than September 23rd? Nino Kuni 2. Switch players have been waiting since 2018 to play Nino Kuni 2 on the loo, and our time is almost here. Building a new kingdom won't be easy, but we will build it. It's just a perfect for Switch game. It's a fun casual RPG. Ever Forward is an adventure puzzle game following the story of a girl named Maya. She's lost in a strange world somewhere between reality and imagination. I'm loving the color palette here. The gameplay mechanics range from simple movement and jumping to teleportation and gravity control, even stealth elements. Recent announcements to the Nintendo Switch library, we have Life is Strange Remastered Collection coming to Switch late this year, but before that, we have a new Life is Strange called True Colors releasing on September 10th. The first Life is Strange is still one of my favorite visual novel style games I've ever played, and for those counting along at home, this counts as two, because it's two different games. Okay. Astria Ascending. JRPG fans are having a blast right now. Here's another with an epic story and rewarding turn-based combat, all rendered in a glorious hand-drawn visual art style, with over 50 hours of gameplay and a range of fun mini games, including shoot 'em ups and an original fantasy-themed card game. Oh, just get it together! New Warrior Wear, it's called Get It Together. Those that haven't played one of these games before might be looking at this gameplay like, you kidding me? But nah, fool. These games are super fun and hilarious to play with friends. Take on over 200 quick and quirky micro games, which are lightning fast games filled with frantic fun. There's a story mode and local co-op, so get it together! On September 10th, the final update to The Binding of Isaac drops in September. It has all the content from Rebirth, Afterbirth, and Afterbirth Plus. It also has a shocking number of new features and improvements, like 130 plus new items, so now more than 700 
in total. 100 plus new enemies, 25 plus new bosses, and two new playable characters. Look, at some point, just make a new game, guys. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Relive the story of Goku once again in another DBZ game that has you playing through all the original sagas. That said, this is my favorite version of that so far, with a massive open world, awesome real-time battles, and fun minigames, like fishing and side quests to discover. It's kind of like a Dragon Quest Dragon Ball game, which is ironic because both these franchises have the, the same artist. It's kind of like full circle. Sonic Colors Ultimate. One of the better Sonic games is back with stunning upscaled visuals, additional features, a new game mode and enhanced gameplay. Hot Wheels Unleashed. I almost disregarded Hot Wheels Unleashed for the video since I was trying to only put games I thought people would actually enjoy on the list, but then I saw the gameplay and it actually looks pretty decent. The gameplay trailer has like 700,000 views on YouTube. So I think people are interested. October. Nintendo out here straight skipping Metroid 4 and going to 5? Apparently, Metroid Dread was announced 16 years ago. I had no idea about the history of this game. There's even a video on Nintendo's own channel I recommend in watching all about that. All I'll say is, once the devastation of no Metroid Prime 4 news wore off, I actually became super excited for Dread. I do love these 2D Metroid games, with Samus Returns on 3DS being one of the best yet. Super Monkey Ball Banana Man. A new Monkey Ball game with more than 300 stages from Super Monkey Ball, Super Monkey Ball 2, and Super Monkey Ball Deluxe. Bounce, tilt, and roll yourself into these new banana bashes on the 5th. Mario Party Superstars. Because Nintendo said screw our other Mario Party game, let's just make a new one. Mario Party Superstars features 5 classic boards from the N64 titles, as well as 100 classic mini games from the N64 and GameCube. My guess is, Nintendo regretted Super Mario Party not being able to play on the Switch Lite due to no Joy-Cons, so they scrapped that one, went back to the days before motion controls, and made a collection of older stuff that will work in handheld mode. On the bright side, this new one has online play, so... That's something. Tormented Souls is a return to classic survival horror. Puzzles, deadly combat, gateways to other dimensions, you know, the usual. Guardians of the Galaxy. Fire up Star-Lord's jet boots for a wild ride across the cosmos in this third-person action-adventure game set in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy universe. You know, I could see this one going one of two ways. Uh, being pretty average or being slightly better than average. Also, something they quietly didn't mention during E3 is that this game is using cloud streaming on Switch, so if you're not a fan of that, you might want to grab it elsewhere. <sighs> and that's October. Are you ready for November? Just Dance 2022. It's Just Dance. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl have remakes coming on November 19th. Yeah, what more do I really have to say? It's the original game's remake. Not in the style of Sword and Shield. Nah, that would have been too interesting. Or even in the gorgeous style that the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee games had. No, instead, um... Let's just say different style. <laughs> There's no additional improvements or changes that I know of, but uh, my own opinions aside, hey, it's Nintendo and it's Pokemon, so of course we're just gonna give them $60 again. Twice to get both. Shin Megami Tensei 5. While Metroid fans have been patiently waiting since June 2017 for Prime 4, Shin Megami Tensei fans have been waiting for the fifth installment in the series since January of 2017. Thankfully, their wait is over on November 12th when this Switch exclusive launches. Akin to the Persona series, Shin Megami is an RPG set in modern day Tokyo. You'll find yourself discovering a new dimension full of demons you can battle, raise and fuse together to make new demons. Ah, that sounds like a good idea. That's all we know right now for November. I mean, th this is getting late in the year. Actually gets worse because December only has one game right now that we know of. Advance Wars 1 and 2. Advance Wars Reboot Camp was just revealed at E3. It's the old school tactics GBA games fully rebuilt by Shantae developers way forward. The Advance War games are wildly regarded as one of the greatest video games of all time. And fun fact, the original games were never supposed to launch outside of Japan, but the Western market loved it so much, it actually led way for other games like Fire Emblem finally releasing outside of Japan. Didn't expect some history today, did ya? That's every dated game from now to the end of the year. Next, we're in our 2021 category. And while some of these have rough windows like winter or summer, they're not dated yet. 
meaning they could fall in December and actually make more than one release, which will probably happen for a lot of these games. Or they might end up being next month in July. There's a lot of these, so let me get going. Neon White is a lightning fast first person action game about exterminating demons in heaven. I love the concept of this one. As you blast through the levels, you draw and play cards to attack with. It's a really stylish game I can't wait to try out. Tight controls, great music, and over a hundred moves to master. Oli Oli World is a bold new skateboarding action platformer that's bursting with personality. Flip and flow through the vivid and vibrant world of Radland. Meet colorful characters as you grind, trick and air your way to discover mystical skate gods. An open world mystery about a solar system trapped in an endless 22 minute time loop, which ends as the sun goes supernova. You repeat the cycle by gaining knowledge which you use to help on later loops. This game has already received critical acclaim and won several awards. Releasing in summer of 2021, Road 96 is a game set in the summer of 1996. You hit the road on a risky adventure filled with thousands of routes. Every mile over opens up choices you need to make and your decisions will change your future and maybe even the world. The visual style is stunning and the soundtrack is filled with 90s hits. Skull, the Hero Slayers, an action-packed roguelike 2D platformer. I have nothing else to say. This was literally the last game I wrote for in the video. It's been 12 hours and it's game like number 103. Oh, I added more after this. I can't fill my brain and it just looks cool, okay? That's what I wrote. I was getting pretty delirious. <laughs> Returned King. Have you ever thought to yourself, I wish League of Legends would just make a turn-based RPG already? <laughs> no? Well, someone did, because that's what Ruined King is. I don't mind the art style here, but the gameplay trailer isn't giving me much to go on. Roller Champions is a 3v3, free-to-play, competitive multiplayer roller skating game. We just got a free-to-play game on Switch where you throw balls at people called Knockout City. But this one has roller skates, so I guess that's better. Bendy and the Dark Revival is an upcoming second episodic installment of the main core series from the Bendy's franchise. It's not considered a sequel or a prequel to Bendy and the Eek Machine, but it is set in the same universe. TMT Shredder's Revenge. Developers.mu came out here and demolished Streets of Rage 4 better than anyone could have expected. Their next project? Yeah, just a new TMNT game called Shredder's Revenge. These guys are unstoppable. They're even working on a new Metal Slug Tactics game. I guess they're building a reputation for being the go-to devs for creating new iterations of the pixelated classics. They're even working on a sequel to Windjack is coming to Switch in 2021 as well. So yes, this counts as two as well. Fall Guys, an indie blockbuster so insanely large, Fall Guys needs no introduction at this point. It's on the way for a 2021 release. I wish they had done it sooner, but I'll flop around for a victory crown later this year. <laughs> Doctor Who, the edge of reality. Have you ever wanted a first person Doctor Who game? Well, you're getting one. Beyond a Still Sky is a 2020 cyberpunk sci-fi adventure game and a long-awaited sequel to Beneath a Still Sky that released in 1994. It has a great cell shaded art style and already has a 9 out of 10 on Steam. The gameplay trailer looked pretty cool. Melty Blood Type Lumina is an upcoming fighting game that has Guilty Gear vibes to me. In 2010, it was originally planned as a HD remake of the original Melty Blood, but over the years, it morphed into a prequel fighting game featuring characters from a rebooted timeline that happened in between the development of the remake. Spelunky 2's world is even denser than the first one, offering more areas, characters, traps, and items, as well as new ways to interact with them. The world has expanded in other ways too, with branching paths and multi-layered levels, adding a third dimension to the classic 2D platforming gameplay. And if you've never played the original, good news, it's also coming alongside this one as a separate release, so that's two. Star Wars Hunters concerns me, but hey, it's Star Wars, right? It's a competitive arena combat game coming for Switch and mobile. There's some gameplay online and it looks reminiscent of Rogue Company, so it might be good. The Caligulia 2? I played the Caligulia effect and it had Persona Light vibes at times, so I have my eye on the sequel and I might even try learning how to pronounce it. When Evil Dead the game was shown at E3, I did not expect it to be coming to Switch, but apparently it is. It's a PvP combat game, I assume very similar to games like Dead by Daylight and Friday the 13th, which I am excited about. My friend RGT and I played Friday 
Friday the 13th a ton when it came out. One player plays as the big scary and hunts all the other players. Try to survive or try to murder everything in your path sometime this year. There's too much to say about Disco Elysium that I can't fit into a 15 seconds here, so just know that it's an absolute masterpiece and is finally dropping on Switch later this year. Bear and Breakfast. I mean, just the name alone. Bear and Breakfast is a laid-back management adventure game where you play as a well-meaning bear trying to run a BMB &B in the woods. Each room can be individually customized. Keep your guests happy to maintain your reputation, complete objectives and storylines to collect new additions, and perks for your inn. I mean, look at this art style. It's so damn adorable. A sequel to Oxenfree is coming in 2021. Like the original, it's a supernatural mystery graphic adventure game influenced by classic teen films. It's fantastic and has near perfect scores, so this sequel is highly anticipated by me and probably other people too, I bet. Garden Story. You ever see a game you know right away you're gonna sink way too much time into it? Garden Story has a similar art style and vibe as games like Stardew Valley or Littlewood. It's a social simulator adventure RPG. Balance caring for the environment, explore new regions, and foster new friendships. Temtem is a Pokemon game for Pokemon fans who are fed up with Pokemon. I played it on my channel a while back and it follows many of the same beats as Pokemon, but it promises an MMO-like experience for the players. I will say that the visuals are gorgeous and I love the Temtem designs, but I really hope they've managed to improve on what I played almost a year ago. Either way, it'll be a blast to dive back in on Switch. Digimon Survive is a gritty, grown-up version of Digimon, a survival strategy RPG where your choices influence the direction of the story, including the Digimon's Digivolution process. Multiple playthroughs can result in different paths and different digivolutions and should the wrong choices be made, characters will be killed. I told you it's very gritty. Card Shark! Don't worry, there's no actual sharks in Card Shark, just a roguelike card game with high stakes. Cruise and Blast. The arcade hit Cruise and Blast is back. Blast your way through nearly 30 over-the-top tracks in 23 custom rides, including unicorns for some reason. So there's a lot of Dangan Romper on the way. Dangan Romper S Ultimate Summer Camp, Dangan Romper V3 Killing Harmony Anniversary Edition, Dangan Rama Trigger Happy Havoc Anniversary Edition, and Dangan Dangan Rama 2 Goodbye Despair Anniversary Edition and phew, I'll be happy if I never have to say Dangan Rama again. Apparently I can't even say it. Blech. I honestly have no freaking clue, man. The, like a mix of adventure, visual novel, and dating sim elements, but with so many of these games, they must be good. <laughs> Finally, the Wii U smash hit Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater comes to Switch with new remastered visuals, new costumes, and photo mode features. Try to survive by using your camera to defend against horrifying ghosts. I recently said that this was the last good Wii U game they could port to Switch, and Xenoblade X fans got really mad at me. <laughs> Moving on. Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga. It's Lego at Star Wars. Look, let's just keep moving. You, you, you know. Crisis Remastered Trilogy. The game so well known for blowing up high-end PCs, Crisis had a remaster earlier this year that somehow ran pretty well on Switch of all things. Well, now the entire trilogy is remastered and on the way. Midiko's Night Market is a narrative-driven social simulation adventure game that celebrates Japanese culture while encouraging players to craft, eat, and ultimately enjoy all of the cats. It has parades, cat racing, puzzles, and a cute art style to tie it all together. Every single game I've shown you so far is coming out this year. That's a lot to play and a lot to be excited for. But the world, hopefully, doesn't end this year. We also have next year. <laughs> God forbid. Pokemon Legends Arceus. Get ready for an all new kind of grand Pokemon adventure in Pokemon Legends Arceus. And finally, the Pokemon game that I and so many of us have been asking for for years. An open world game where we see the Pokemon in the wild and we throw balls in real time. We had a quick glimpse at this game and it looks really early in development so it might have a ways to go, but it has Breath of the Wild vibes and that can never be a bad thing. I'm more excited for this 
than any other Pokemon game in over a decade. Oh, <laughs> and Splatoon 3 is coming. I can't believe this relatively new IP took off the way it did, instantly becoming a Nintendo classic, and I love it. Currently, Nintendo's best and maybe only third-person shooter will be blasting ink again in 2022. Judging by the incredible announcement trailer, I'm thinking it might even have a great new story mode planned, but either way, new weapons, stages, modes, 4v4 turf war action can can't wait. Triangle Strategy. You played Octopath Traveler. You loved the 2D HD art style that Square invented for that game. You enjoyed the wonderful turn-based combat and you slightly resented the repetitiveness of the gameplay near the end, but now you can look forward to an all new game from the same creators, Triangle Strategy name pending. Just as gorgeous as Octopath, in this new game it switched out the turn-based gameplay for traditional tactics combat, but on a multi-tiered battlefield. Speaking of tactics, Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Mario and Rabbids was a surprise smash hit from Ubisoft in 2017. It was a universe mashup I never knew I wanted and a tactics Mario game I never knew I wanted. But from the fantastic in-depth gameplay to vibrant and wonderfully animated visuals to the stellar soundtrack, it was another Nintendo instant classic. Now we're getting a sequel that takes us into space in 2022. The gameplay seems to be mixing it up big time, but it should be interesting. Two Point Campus. Are you ready to build your own school campus? I hope so, because that's the whole point of Two Point Campus. <laughs> Everything from planting the trees to shaping the students' future. Two equally important tasks. Rune Factory 5 is a role-playing simulation game that has farming, monster taming, and a massive world to explore. Also, relationship building all the way up to Marion. Ah, oh, man, I've read through like a hundred of these, and I, I don't want my energy level to be low for this one, because breath of the... Freaking too much, right? Too much. It's New Zelda, guys. Come on. My guess right now is it's going to be called The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Time. That's just my guess. Let me know what you think the title might be down below. I think that because we finally saw some gameplay during Nintendo's E3 Direct. It was the best part of the Direct. Link has a messed up arm that may be allowing him to reverse time. Also, Hyrule has been lifted into the sky. So from the fields to the clouds, there is so much new Zelda to explore next year. Easily my most anticipated game maybe ever. Not as many confirmed 2022s as I thought there would be, but there are still a bunch of games that are to be confirmed. No tentative release dates yet. Honestly, these could end up being this year. The developers have been pretty quiet on them, but I would say for sure by the end of 2022 for most of these because they were either announced a while ago or it just feels right. So these are the TBAs. Boldo has always given me Nino Kuni vibes, a beautiful looking adventure RPG full of puzzles and intricate dungeons to solve. Travel the world, meeting weird and funny characters. I mean, look at it. Sports Story. Look, I gotta be honest, I actually forgot they were making a sequel to Golf Story. Sports Story is a game all about sports, but not really because it's, it's actually fun and more of an RPG. Or so I'm assuming based on how incredibly fun Golf Story was. Or is. Hasn't changed. Yeah, Hollow Knight Silk Song. That, that might come out at some point. This one is becoming as much of an indie mystery as Hollow Knight is, to be honest. I'm really excited for Eastwood. It's developed by Chucklefish, a team that has mastered pixel work like no other. The trailers speak for themselves. Wonderful, charming, exciting. I mean, I, there's been a few games I'm like, yeah, I'm so excited for this, but this is in there. Oh my God. Bayonetta 3 and Metroid Prime 4. I know, but if I don't put them on the list, you know what people will say. Both announced in 2017, both missing in action, both apparently still on the way. My theory with Bayonetta is that the development was halted while Platinum Games worked on Astral Chain, but they should be back on the game now. And Metroid Prime 4 had nothing to show again at E3, so who freaking knows anymore? Quantum Leap. Remember that weird 1v1 shooter game where you play in rounds, with each one creating a new version of you and you need to tactically play with your past and future selves? That's still coming somewhere. I love the concept though. I hope this happens soon. Axiom Verge 2. The long awaited sequel to Axiom Verge expands on the universe with a new character, new abilities and gameplay. All right, okay, okay, I've had enough. I've had it. And I had enough while I was writing the video. <laughs> Up till now is 98. We are now at 98, which means there are still 17 more. For every one of these, I wrote a little blurb about the game to kind of get you excited and tell you what the game is about. For the next 17, 
I don't really know what some of them are about. I don't really care. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. Just like every good Nintendo Direct, it ends or somewhere near the end, there's a sizzle reel of just like a like flashing of games. They don't really tell you anything about them. You just kind of get to see them. Welcome to the beat em up sausage sizzle. Let's go. <laughs> Variable Barricade. It's a visual novel, I think. Epic Chef, a farming, crafting, cooking game with some beautiful screenshots online. XIII or 13, the long awaited remake for the GameCube smash hit XIII apparently quietly released last November and also apparently it sucked. <laughs> but it's also coming to Switch, so. <laughs> but thankfully we have Rico London coming, which looks like the XIII we actually wanted. Slow-mo, Max Payne looking, stylish, kill chaining combo shooter. Mary Skelter, final. I don't know. Vampire Swan Song. It's a narrative driven single player RPG in which you control three vampires, each with different abilities. Boyfriend Dungeon. The game that stole my likeness. A, a shack and slash that is missing in action, but hopefully still on the way. Olympia, sorry? It's another visual novel. Tunch, a beautifully hand-drawn beat-em-ups adventure with five playable characters featuring Hat Kid and four-player co-op. Skater XL, it's a skating game. Skatebird, it's a skating game, but you're a burb. Dungeon Defenders, a couch co-op tower defense action RPG with loot, and honestly, I just thought the art style looked promising. Daruku, Agents of Suck. Uritani. It's another visual novel. <laughs> Hazel Sky. Uh, kind of uncharted looking, I guess, but I'd, no combat, I think. Dragon Quest Heroes 1 and 2. The English release is still on the way. Yokai Watch 4. The English release is still on the way. <laughs> Elder Scrolls. A Souls like pixel art boss rush game that I'll probably love, but think it's too hard and give up on it because I'm a big old baby and that's it! 115! I'm done! Actually, though, that feels really good. <laughs> First and foremost, a huge shout out to my boy, Zach. <laughs> And I usually do them myself and don't make my editors do them, but Zach was up for it. What a nightmare. And I just appreciate him so much. A big shout out in the comments to Zach, and there'll be links in the description to find his YouTube channel and his Etsy now. He's doing stuff on Etsy. But that set, oh wait, oh man, where's my green screen? And that's the Beat em Ups Direct. <laughs> With 115 games coming to the Nintendo Switch in 2021, 2022, and beyond. That, Nintendo, is how you make a direct stuffed full with fun games and information on what's coming to everyone's favorite hybrid console. That's why I have a million subs or more on YouTube. That's why I'm the king of Nintendo Switch content. <laughs> And that's why all of you watch me and my dumb antics. I never know what I'm gonna do week to week. Apparently this week I thought this was a good idea. And next week I'll probably think something completely different is a good idea. And if you want to watch all of the chaos that is me online, I'd appreciate the sub. You know what I haven't done in a long time and it just feels right? Bring it in, Zach. Bring it in. Bring it in right here. Bring him in. Hair flip on that subscribe button. <laughs> if you want to support me, you can follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Twitch, you can follow me wherever you want to follow me. But I'm going to follow myself to bed. Love you all. Bye.